I hope you took some time to really go within because, see, no one knows you like you. You know what it is that you need to work on. I mean, one of my main issues that I had to dramatically change about myself was I had to develop courage. I used to go see people do things. I saw speakers on stage. My heart would say, I can do that. But I didn't have the courage to stand up for myself. For 14 years, I procrastinated. For 14 years, I kept myself as a spectator sitting on the sidelines. And then I saw a speaker and he was so boring, the room was as quiet as a graveyard between funerals. And I said, whoa, if he could do it, I know I can do it. And because I saw what he did, and his brother-in-law was sitting next to me, and he said, you ought to be that boring and earn the kind of money he earned. I said, how much do they pay him? He said, $5,000. I said, $5,000? He's only been talking for about 45 minutes or an hour. He says, that's how much they make. Now, I wasn't earning $5,000 a month. I said, wait a minute. If he can do that, I know I can do that. Have you ever done that before? He gave me courage. And so at that, at that moment, now that was a decision. I didn't have to have his example of, of somebody that, that was less talented than I was to give me the courage. I should have had the courage to stand up myself, to believe in my own stuff. But the truth of the matter is, I didn't. And I can't unscramble those eggs. I cannot pull those years back. I cannot recapture those 14 years. Maybe, that's why my, my favorite book says, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before. And press toward the call of your higher calling. Press toward that mark of your higher calling. And that's what I do. That's what I do every day. I have to continue to work up the courage. I remember going in to do a presentation before a group of educators. I was the only one there without a college degree. And I had to talk to myself. I went into the bathroom and I said, Les Brown, let me tell you something. What do you care about the fact they have MBAs and PhDs? That only means pile high and deep to you and not any dis disrespect for credentials. They're very important. But I had to get myself together. Hey, look here, you can't go in there worrying about what they have. Just bring what you have. You got seven children you got to take care of. You got a mother you have to take care of. And you have something to say. You have some talent. You have some abilities. You've got to believe in yourself. You got to stand up. You can't punk out now. You can't fold now. See, sometimes you have to talk to yourself. It might be the most intelligent conversation you will ever have, talking to yourself. So that radical change, it doesn't happen overnight. You can make the decision, but you've got to stay on top of yourself every day to come from and live your life from a place of power, courage, and faith, as opposed to being a volunteer victim, as most people are, volunteer victims. Here's something else. Get an accountability partner. Get someone that's like you, a like-minded, like-hearted person that you have similar goals and dreams and you hold each other accountable and you talk with each other on a regular basis. And if you can, join a mastermind group of other supportive mindsets of individuals who are working to improve themselves, who are stretching and challenging themselves. And here's something else, a worthwhile investment. Find yourself a coach. Find someone in your industry, find someone in your area of interest that you can invest in yourself and have an accountability coach. I have a coach. I spend over $100,000 a year on my personal growth and development on my coach. Why, Les? You are Les Brown. You were selected one of the top five speakers in the world. You got the highest award from Toastmasters International and the National Speakers Association. You, you're one of the highest paid speakers in the world. Why would you need a coach? If you ever watch Tiger Woods, who everybody would say arguably one of the greatest golfers on the planet today, whenever he swings, you will see him look at the ball and then he'll look to the right to look at his coach. If Tiger Woods needs a coach, what do you need? What do I need? Here's something I can tell you that I know. You can't see the picture when you're in the frame. You can't see the picture when you're in the frame. Most people fail because they don't know that they don't know and they think they know. Einstein said, the thinking that has brought me this far has created some problems that this thinking can't solve. See, what got you where you are right now? Your best thinking has produced the level of money that you have, your level of accomplishment, the growth of your business, or the lack of. Your best thinking has produced that. Own that. Face that 
and get some help. One of the things I teach, ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. And ask for help. And don't stop until you get it. And so take the time and find someone that can coach you. Find someone that will have the courage to tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. And that's what I have in Mike Williams, who's been my coach for the past 38 years. And I shudder to think what would have happened to me. I used to be a disc jockey, Les Brown, the man about town, LB, Triple P. There were none before me. There will be none after me. Therefore, that makes me the one and only. Young and single, love to mingle, certified, bona fide, duplicate, qualified to bring you satisfaction and a whole lot of action. I was bad, baby. Yes, I was. And this guy said, Les, you're more than a disc jockey. What are you talking about? Man, if you can entertain people and don't see them, if you can reach people less through this microphone and you can't see them, what can you do if you could see them? If you can entertain them, you can educate them. You can empower them. If, if you can be less from the man about town and, and you can swim to the bottom of the deepest ocean or climb to the mountain, the top of the highest mountain, no matter where you go, they'll be talking about me, LB, Triple P. If you can come up with all of that kind of gobbly gob garbage, what could you do if you sat down and you started thinking and doing editorials about things that's maintaining our detriment? What could you do to inspire people to register to vote? What could you do to begin to impact public policy? You've got to get a larger vision of yourself. I said, Mike, I never thought about myself in that way. See, has everyone, anybody ever seen something for you that you didn't see it for yourself? I didn't see that for myself. Maybe that's why my favorite book says, eye is not seen, ear is not heard, nor has entered a heart of mankind what God has in store for you. Because of what he saw in me, he inspired me. He gave me a vision of myself beyond my circumstances, beyond my mental conditioning, and beyond the job where I was, because I thought I was just a disc jockey. I love that. I'm master a microphone. You drop me in any city, I can master a microphone. I can turn a city upside down with a microphone. But... I had more in me than I was expressing, and I did not know it. And because of this encouragement, I became a community activist. Because of this encouragement, I started doing a talk show called Voice of the People. Because of this encouragement, when I got out of radio, I ran for the Ohio legislature, and I was elected. And because of this encouragement, I passed 14 bills my first term. Because of this encouragement, I was elected three times and became the chairman of the Human Resource Committee. Because of this encouragement, I became a public speaker. Because of this encouragement, I became an author. Because of this encouragement, I did a show for King World called The Les Brown Show, and they paid me $5 million, $2 million not to speak. Because of this encouragement, I produced specials for PBS, public television. They said, you can't do that. You don't have a college education. It's educational television. Because of his encouragement, I did so many things I had absolutely no idea that I could do. I encourage you to live full and to die empty. There's more in you right now than just working on a job where they pay you just enough to keep you from quitting and you work just hard enough to keep from getting fired. And when you make the decision and identify that key area of your life that you need to make a radical change, things will begin to open up for you. Now here's the other thing that's very important. Once you identify your goal, I want you to get, if possible, a visual picture of your goal. My major goal was to buy my mother a home. I got the picture of the home with a 12-foot swimming pool and a basketball court on a golf course. I bought that home for my mother. It cost just over $400,000, 10,000 square feet. I had a picture long before I had the money and the down payment to get it. My goal was to be known nationally and internationally as a speaker. I had that goal. I had a card that I had on one side, asking it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking it shall be opened. On the other side I had, I'm the world's number one orator. I produced that result in my life. I had a goal of becoming a talk show host. I used to watch Phil Donahue, and I put my picture on the screen of the television as I listened to the program. I visualized myself there, and I was called by King World Production, and I had my own talk show. Well, it was the highest rated, fastest canceled talk show in the history of television. Well, at least I had one. <laughs> it's called life. Now, here's something else. You will fail your way to success. 
Trust me on that. You can have a lot of failures, a lot of disappointments, but you will fail your way to success. Goethe says, that which does not kill you will make you stronger. See, 85% of people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. That's why you have to be of good courage. You have to have courage. When life knocks you down, I have a saying, try and land on your back, because if you can look up, you can get up. So once you look at and decide the goal that you want, you want to put some things, put a treasure board or a, a goal board and have pictures of the goal that you want to achieve so you can see it every day. When you get up in the morning and the last thing at night, you're programming your subconscious mind where nine out of ten decisions that you make comes from there. Here's something else. Not only do you want a, a physical picture that you can see every day to remind you to keep you on course, but the other thing that's very important, achieving your goals, writing your goals down in detail, and having seven action steps that you take every day. Now, Robert Shuler said, by the yard it's hard, but inch by inch, anything is a cinch. You want to think about what are the things I need to do every day. Break it down into increments. You have your 30-day goals, and you have your three-month goals, and your six-month goals, and your one-year goals, all right? You want to break it down in increments. What do you need to do starting today? Don't squander any time. There goes a second. There goes another second. There goes another second. And all the power in the world can't bring it back. So what are seven things that you can do starting today? And then once you do those seven things, then you work on all the other stuff. But what are the seven most important steps that you can take that can move you in the direction of your goal? And when I decided to become a speaker, I started memorizing quotes every day. That was one of the goals I had, to memorize quotes. I have probably over four to 500 quotes and statistics in my head in all kind of areas. I've spoken at the National Convention for Real Estate Conventions, REMAX. I've, I've spoken for doctors and lawyers. I trained over 5,000 doctors last year, teaching doctors how to communicate with their patients to increase their taking of their hypertension medication, to increase their compliance from 30 percent. I was paid $640,000 in one month, Monday through, Friday, Monday through Thursday, 30 minutes a day. A lot of people work a whole year and don't do that. I don't tell you that to impress you, but to impress upon you. You've got greatness in you. You can do more than you can ever begin to imagine. I had no idea this Les Brown you see existed. I had no idea. And the reason that you're watching me now is because you know in your heart of hearts that you can do what I've done and even more. And so as you begin to think about that, think about writing your goals down, listening to motivational messages, changing your relationships, upgrading your relationships, thinking about seven things you need to do every day, some radical change you need to make in you. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. Here's something else that's very, very important. As we talked about having a personal coach, the next thing that's important about reaching your goals is this. What is it as you look in your past that's affecting you right now. I, I saw a movie called Magnolia, a powerful line in that movie. And the movie said, we might be through with our past, but our past is not through with us. Whoa. Let me share something with you I realize about myself. The reason that I procrastinated for 14 years was because when I was in the fifth grade and Mrs. Mary Ford Williams said to Mrs. Crompton, he doesn't belong here. He is slow. He's not like his brother. And they put me back from the fifth, fifth grade to the fourth grade. That affected me. I didn't even realize it. They say sticks and stones will break your bones, but words will never hurt you. Yes, they will. But they can also free you up. Because I'll never forget when I met Mr. Washington. It was my junior year in high school. I've been in special education from the fourth grade all the way up to my junior year in high school. My twin brother always made the honor roll. And he said, young man, work this problem out for me. He was a new instructor. I said, sir, I can't do that. He said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your students. He said, look at me. Yes, sir. Work the problem out anyhow. I can't do what you asked me to do, sir. Why? Sir, because I'm, I'm educable, mentally retarded. And the students erupted in laughter. They said, hey, he's DT. He said, what's that? He's the dumb twin. He's not Wesley. That's Leslie. And he came from behind his desk and he said, don't ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. I was, I was a jarring statement. On one hand, I was humiliated, but on the other hand, I was liberated because he looked at me with the eyes of Goethe who said, look at a man the way that he is, he only becomes worse. But look at him as if he were what he could be, 
then he becomes what he should be. And here's what I learned from that experience. I want you to visualize yourself already there. Whatever goal, whatever dream that you have, see the picture complete. See yourself there. Why? We have something at the base of our brains called the reticular activating system. See, you have genius within you, and, and to prove it, let me give you an example. The other night, I, I said, I've got to get up tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. I was at a hotel. I called downstairs and told them to call me at 7 o'clock. The hotel neglected to do it, but I woke up at 7 o'clock on the nose. Have you ever done that before? How did you know when to get up? Hey, that subconscious mind. Everything we need, the answers are already there. Have you ever seen somebody and said, you know what, I, I remember your face, but I, I don't exactly know where. And then later on you say, hey, I know, I know where I saw you, and it came. What happened? The conscious mind sent that thought to the subconscious mind, and it pulled that information up and gave it to you. Now, when you begin to hold the vision of what it is you want to achieve, you stimulate what is called the reticular activating system. It's a network like group of cells at the base of your brain. Let me share with you how it works. Have you ever purchased a car? No one goes to buy a car that has the same color that everyone else has. Has that ever happened to you before? But then once you buy the car and you drive it off the lot, you start seeing it everywhere. Say, hey, where did this come from? Let me, let me tell you what happened. You made an investment. And because you made an investment that piqued your awareness, that stimulated your reticular activating system. Another case in point. I was at a party with a friend of mine and, and we were dancing and music was blasting. She said, wait a minute, my son is crying, he's at the door. I said, your son's not at the door because even if he were, you wouldn't be able to hear him. And she stopped, went to the door, opened the door and there her four-year-old son was at the door. How did she hear it and I didn't hear it and the other people dancing? It wasn't our child, it was her child. Her reticular activating system picked up his whimpering sound. And I'm saying to you that you have that in you. When you focus on your goals and dreams and you visualize it complete, it will stimulate the reticular activating system and it will lead you there following all the other things that we suggested. Now, not only is it possible you can live your dream, it's necessary that you change relationships, that you get a coach, that you meet with other like-minded people that will hold you accountable, that you write your goals down, that you have seven steps that you do every day on your goals to monitor to see where you are, but you've got to take full responsibility. If everything work out for you, fine. If you have the money, fine. If you can get the help and support of friends and family members and your spouse, great. But if you don't, all of those things are minor things. The major key to your reaching your goals is you. Nobody's going to work on your dream harder than you. Trust me on that one. You've got to take responsibility to make it happen. If it happens when you come out the gate, fine. But if you fail, so what? Come back again and again and again and again. If it's something that you love, if it's your passion, until you do it. George Bernard Shaw said, the people that make it in this life, they look around for the circumstances that they want, and if they can't find them, they create them. Here's something else. It's hard. When I bought the first home for my mother, and they did a, and I didn't do a title search, and a guy sued me, and I had to move out from the big, beautiful home I bought her to a roach-infested home I moved her out of, and the neighbors came out and said, maybe y'all back? Yes, what happened? My boy lost the house. He didn't do a title search. And we had to get out. They foreclosed on the house. He didn't have the $50,000 to pay the guy who put a lien on the property. It was devastating. But let me tell you something. It was worth it because I came back. 90 days later, I got a bigger and better house. 90 days later, I stayed focused on the goal. And that's the thing that you want to do. Stay focused on your goal. Keep the main thing the main thing. You're going to have distractions. That's a part of the process. It's not there to stop you. It's only there to challenge you. You want to grow through it. You know, I think it was Robert Shul who said, tough times never last, but tough people do. Keep the main thing the main thing. You going through hell? Don't stop. Keep moving. <laughs> Keep on moving. Don't stop to talk about it. Keep moving. That's the name of the game. Keep on swinging. One of my favorite movies is, is Cool Hand Luke. And, 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 and Paul Newman, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, but there's a scene where Cool Hand Luke is fighting a guy. Guy, big dude, just kept knocking him down. Bam! 
that kept on knocking him down. Cool Hand would get up, he'd knock him down. Bam! And pretty soon the guys would feel inside and say, stay down, Cool Hand, stay down. Cool Hand and Luke would get back up again. Guy would knock him down. Bam! The guy would say, stay down, man, stay down. Cool Hand would get back up again. The guy would knock him down. Bam! And after a while, the guy got tired of knocking Cool Hand down. And Cool Hand stood up. Everybody had walked away, and he was still swinging in the wind. Swinging. Nobody was there but him. That's who I am. Cool Hand Luke. That's who you want to be. Cool Hand Luke. You keep on swinging, and the universe will yield to you. It will dispatch angels to come rescue you and say, back off. Give him what he wants. Give her what she wants. Let's go find a whip today. That's the way life is. It's hard, but it's worth it. What it will make it worth it for you? Nietzsche said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. I want you to take the time and write down 12 reasons on why you won't fail. Because when the tough times come, they're going to come. When life hits you on the blind side, and that's going to happen, your children start going crazy. Or someone you thought you'd be married to for the rest of your life, like I went through, and they decide they want a divorce. Call life. What is it that can keep you going? Your reasons will be your rod and staff to comfort you, to take you through that process. I can tell you it's possible. You can live your dreams. It's necessary that you surround yourself with people you can learn from and grow from, that you write your goals out, you work on them every day, that you have a made of mind, I'm going to make it. It's necessary that you constantly work on yourself, reading positive material, listening to positive material, going to seminars and workshops, investing in yourself, getting a coach, and it's you. You've got to take personal responsibility to make it happen. Don't see yourself as a victim, and it's hard. It's hard. Changing your life is hard. Getting up, working when you're in pain is hard. It's hard. It's hard. Working when you are trying to make something happen for you and the family, and you go home and, and you're facing a living hell where you need to refuel and replenish yourself mentally and emotionally and spiritually, and you got a battle in your home base. It's hard to keep your spirit up. It's hard. And people don't see the vision. They don't believe in you. They say, oh, you can count on me, and they're not there. They just lied. They're only there when they need you. It's hard. I can tell you, it's worth it. The sacrifice that you have to make, I can tell you from my experience. It's worth it. So take the time to write down, what are those 12 reasons of why you won't give up? What is it that will make it worth it for you? And once you find that, you will create some momentum in your life, and then it's done. It's done. Stick a fork in it. It's done. Here's something I want you to keep in mind. Life is a fight for territory. It's a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. I want you to read that. I want you to memorize that. I want you to put it someplace where you can see it. I want you to keep that in mind. Life is a fight for territory. And once, once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want, will automatically take over. Once you stop fighting for financial freedom, I am cancer free, I'm debt free, and I'm drama free. I have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. I'm fighting for my peace of mind. I'm fighting for my freedom. I'm fighting for my children's children's children. I'm fighting to create a brighter tomorrow. I'm fighting to make a difference in life. I'm fighting to, to make my print. To leave my mark, I, I, I refuse to die and unlive life. And, and that, that's what you are doing right now. You're saying to yourself, I refuse to die and unlive life. I want my life to count. I want my life to mean something. I want not to be a burden to anybody. I want to control my own future, to write my own check, to control my own destiny, to do, want to do, to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Not to answer to anyone else, but myself. You have it like that. The only reason you're watching me is because we're cut from the same cloth. We're branches of the same tree. The only reason you take the time to invest in your time, your money, and your energy to just stay here and focus right now. Because you feel me in your heart. Where your heart is, there your treasure is also. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I say to you, keep in mind what I said. Life is a fight for territory. Once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically.
take over. Jim Rowan said something I love. He said, when the end comes for you, let it find you conquering a new mountain, not sliding down an old one. No. Life is too short and unpredictable, as, as Helen Keller would say. Eat the dessert first. Don't let it find you sliding down the same mountain. I don't know what your goals are. I don't know what your dreams are. Here's what I know about you. You have greatness within you. Here's what I know about you, and I don't even know you, but based upon my own experience, you were chosen on purpose for a purpose. One out of 400 million sperm. You have greatness within you, but greatness is a choice. It's not your destiny. It's a choice that you have to make every day. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve, the mediocre part of yourself or the greatness that you were chosen for. God bless your dream. God bless the greatness that is in you. The world needs you, and we need you now. And so it is.